Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Hope everyone has had a fantastic week. Good morning, good morning. Totally forgot my glasses. They're in the other room. I'm not going to get them. How is, oh gosh, Sandy, 12 below. Cassie has the freezing emoji for sure. For sure. Hello, how has everyone's week been? It's It's been a, a week here. <laughs> Glad it's weekend. Um... I definitely want to get started probably a little bit earlier <laughs> than my normal chatting today. I have to take Ethan to the doctor again um, after the live. He's not feeling well, so awesome. <laughs> Breathing issues again. Hello, it's so good to see everybody this morning. I'm going to fix my screen just a little bit. Hello, hello. Um, has everybody seen the new release from Simon Says Stamp? It went live yesterday um, at midnight. Uh, so, or yes, that's right. Uh, brand new, some new fun things. I've got um, today's live project, and then I will have a video as part of the blog hop tomorrow. So definitely come back for that. Um, one moment, I'm so sorry. Um, so lots of that going on. Yes, ordered some, Teresa said. Awesome. Hello, Melly. Good afternoon from Italy. That is awesome. So good to see everybody here today. I hope, hope you've had a good week. Hope you're looking forward to the weekend. Let me know in the chat what you're going to do this weekend. Um, yeah, Ginger, thank you. It's, it's kind of, it's been... It's been a year. <laughs> He's had a rough go of it, unfortunately. It's been a few, quite a few years since we've had this rough of a go of it. Yeah, it is a beautiful release, Maureen. I agree. Hello, Amy in Hawaii. Okay, you guys. So we're going to create a flat shaker today, but we're also going to do one of my very favorite techniques, which is the um, embossing a background image and then watercoloring it, and I say air quotes for that, because I love to use zigs and a water brush pen to create that watercolor look. And of course, the embossed area is going to hold the ink into that section, which makes it, you know, <laughs> a, a lot easier for someone who's watercolor challenged. <laughs> Jenna thinks he will be fine. Um, we did a breathing treatment this morning. He just, he even, I said, do you want me to call the doctor? And he said, yes. So Yes, it is. We're going to go. Sandy is making pasta hearts. That is so awesome. Yay. Shaman, I'm not allowed. I'm spending too much on cross-stitch stuff. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's so much good stuff. And all the good stuff that's going to be coming soon. How about all of the, the market release stuff for that? Um, oh, that doesn't really go on top there. Um, okay, I'm going to flip the camera around and talk a little bit. Please remember, like, subscribe if you haven't already. We just, as I keep saying, we're inching closer and closer to 100K. Um, I think we're going to hit there, oh, you know, maybe a few months, but we're going to make it. So I'm super, super excited. Deb says, my grand boy has had to have more of breathing treatments these last few months. It is, and it's just awful. I knew when I went down to, to see why he wasn't up this morning and I could hear it, I knew. Um, sometimes he just slightly doesn't feel good <laughs> and this was, I could, I could definitely tell. Okay, yes, Sarah Lawn Flan does release soon. I cannot wait. I have a video for you next week. So very, very excited. So good. Yes, Ginger, and absolutely, especially when your 17-year-old says call the doctor. This is twice in a year that he has said call the doctor, and normally he's like, no, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> he never wants to go. So for sure, when they say please call, you know they don't feel good. Okay, let's flip the camera around and talk about today's card. Oh, I need to... Let's get rid of some of that sun glare. Maybe I should show you guys why I'm slightly distracted. 
Do you guys want to know? I wasn't going to share him yet. Come here. Odin got a friend, but he is literally getting into everything, but he threw a massive fit and was screeching in his crate. So uh, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Hello. Tell them all hi. Tell them all hi. You're being real chill now. Not going to make any noise. Uh, we picked him up. We went and met the, the guy at the airport yesterday. <laughs> so, yep, this is our friend, new little friend. Right? I like how he's being all chill, but he's literally been running around. Odin loves him. Uh, we did get him for Odin. <laughs> Odin has needed a friend. Um, Brody, Brody is elderly, which I've talked about a lot. Um, he sleeps pretty much all day. I don't think it's probably the best sign. Um, and we had, we just thought we didn't want Odin to get too much older before we bought him a friend. Um, and so this is his friend. They love each other already, but this one is being a pill. <laughs> He's brand new. We literally got him at 5, 6, 6 p.m. last night. Um, his name is Frank. <laughs> Isn't it? Frank the Tank? Are you sweet? He's sweet. Yes, uh, he does look like, so we have two that look like an Ewok now. Right, Odin? Odin wants him down so he can play with him. So, um, yes, and obviously the, the puppy I showed you Monday night is my daughter's, Coda, and he's super tiny. Like, he's toy-sized. He's not even two pounds. This one is a little bit bigger. He's a little bit more of sized for Odin because Odin is large for Shizu. <laughs> um, and this one is they're almost 13 weeks. He's very, very close to 13 weeks. But what we think is funny, Odin was born on my birthday. Um, so, and we had just lost our previous dog like two days before the, Odin was born. And so we just kind of felt like Odin was meant to be. And this little guy was born on Ethan's birthday. So he's Ethan's and or Odin's. We think he's probably just Odin's. Okay, don't chew on stuff. Odin, keep him in line, okay? Anyway, he's adorable. <laughs> he probably will be in every live, but he's trying to get into everything in my office. We haven't been in here, and so he's like, oh, let's see what there is. Yeah, he's very cute, and we love him. Yeah, a baby carrier. <laughs> yes, uh, Anyway, that's why I'm a little distracted today and maybe why I have bags under my eyes. Oh, how fun. <laughs> yeah, te Coda is teeny, teeny tiny. And Odin wants to play with him, but let I'm afraid to let him play with him because Odin is ginormous. All right, everybody. So now that you see why, what I've got going on right under my feet, because he, he, of course, wants to be right by me. Let's talk about today's card. We are going to be using the brand new, this is the balloons background. And I did put all the supplies in um, the description under the video. But I love a good background stamp. And I love when you can stamp something and add some very, very easy coloring it to it. So we are going to stamp this on some Bristol Smooth cardstock with embossing ink, heat emboss with white embossing powder, and then add a little bit of easy watercolor. And I'm going to show you how I achieve that. And it works so good with the balloons because it you can kind of see them like they're transparent and you can see through um, see through each one and kind of get a hint of the color. So we are going to be using that, and then we are also going to be using this brand new big old birthday stamp set. I love this. There are coordinating dies, and it is just a great, I don't know about you guys, but I always need a really good birthday stamp set. Um, I, and I like having lots of them to choose from in my stash. Oh, thank you guys. I'm glad you like the card. 
and that you like little Frank who Odin's trying to keep in line. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough keeping Odin in line some days. Let's go ahead and stamp this. Something else new in the release is the stamp and stencil mat, which there are some others out there. So it's just another option. This is Simon's, obviously. I will tell you, I really love this card, A2 sized card orientation in the middle of the sticky mat so that if you are stamping a background, and I do know it's got a little dog ear, but I'm gonna stamp this slightly bigger and then we're gonna trim it down when it's dry. What I love is then you can position your background stamp anywhere in here and then it's going to be perfectly placed because if you place your background right over either landscape or portrait, it's going to cover the whole thing. So I do really like that. Oh, yay! Maureen bought this set yesterday watching from work. Kim says, I love it. This mat is super handy. Now, you don't have to use it with your Misty. Obviously, it works great with a Misty, but if you just need to hold on to something while you're working, it's going to work great for that too. So, I did prep my cardstock with a little bit of the powder tool. And we are going to stamp our background. I'm going to use the embossing and watermark ink. Why do puppies like power cords for everything? Seriously. Whole basket of toys. Uh-uh. No. And I, because it is secure in my Misty, I am going to stamp this twice. Oh, what did I miss? A new little baby girl arrived in our family today. Oh, congratulations. That is so exciting. That is wonderful news. I love happy news. Thank you so much for sharing, Miss Campbell. Congratulations. Okay. I'm gonna take some white. Now, because I stamped this on white, you could also use clear if you prefer clear. And I am just going to make sure we get everything covered. And I'm gonna work kind of in little areas. So I hopefully don't make too big of a mess. I think we got it all. You can always, I always flick my cardstock a little bit in case there's anywhere that doesn't need or has some little stray flakes. All right, it's gonna be a little noisy for a minute. And Frank is completely unbothered by the noise, which I'm super glad about. Oh no, Laura. Deb, I am with you there. And seriously, I see that I did not get... Let me grab a paintbrush before I get too... Well, that's way bigger than I want. Let me grab a little paintbrush. If you ever get embossing powder where you don't want it, you can use a dry paintbrush which I know is not, you guys probably already know that. Oh, I did not do the best job here today. All right. Oh, Miss Campbell said, thanks everyone. Um, Northern Ireland, they, they are, she's in Northern Ireland. And her name is Haley, six pounds, 10 ounces. Aww. Congratulations. I love, love, happy news. Oh, I see somewhere else I missed. 
It might be that kind of a Friday, friends. Maybe we can cut that part off. This is going to be inside of a flat shaker. So, some little imperfections here and there should be able to be hidden. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I think not, sir. Can I have the toy? All right, I'm gonna do a quick brush off. I love her name too. I love that name. Yeah, oh, super huge mess. Let me do a tiny cleanup. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit before we color. So what I think is the secret weapon of this technique is a water brush pin. I love a water brush pin. Deb, oh my gosh. Okay, so Deb says she chews gum constantly, blew a bubble when she had her heat gun on and it got on her bubble ick. Oh, yuck. Yeah, that's not good. Not good at all. Teach me your ways. <laughs> Cleaning as you go. Yeah, I'm not super great at it, to be real honest. Uh, I wish I was better. Okay, so having something to clean your brush off as you're working, I'm just gonna use a microfiber cloth, and this already has plenty of water in it. What I find works best is we're gonna do about one, one or two balloons at a time so that they dry. And the great thing about this is it can you can really kind of control the water so you're not oversaturating. I'm going to attempt to do the lighter balloons first. Sometimes I forget and I don't. But all I'm gonna do, and I will tell you this particular marker, the yellow one, it really, really, need, I need to replace it. The tip is bad. I think it's running out of ink. So that's why we're gonna use it first. Let's see. Oh, awesome, Suki Scrappin' Fox. That's awesome. Let's see, just turned in, what did you miss? Not a lot, Diana. Not too much. Okay, and I'm gonna skip over here. I do have the benefit of having done this. And I want to say at least once, but I can tell you I did it more than once because the first one I messed up. But, you know, is what it is. This is some sugar, no, this is light pink. Wrong. And I am just gonna go in, and you'll notice I'm just taking the color along the embossed line, not really all over um, the balloon. Then I'm going to start watercoloring and I'm just going to lay my water brush and pull that color out. So I kind of just take it all along that line I just colored and pull out. Well, love, yes. Made it to a live, Rochelle said, yes. Question from Bonnie. What is the difference between Zig and the Karen Pro markers? Uh, they are both water-based markers, and they will do similar things. I do have the Karen marker. Corinne. I call them Karen. Corinne markers. My bad. Sorry. Lori, I'm sorry. I am not proficient with them. I have tried them a few times and I'm not great with them. And so I just, I tend to gravitate toward the zigs because I'm more comfortable. But if I know a lot of people love them. So definitely try, I mean, if, if you like them, you could really do something similar. I'm going to go ahead. I did not clean my marker out real great, but I think it'll be okay. I went and did that. We're going to do the same thing here and just pull that dark pink. Does anyone have the Corinne markers and prefer using them? I would love to know. Leave me a comment. 
I see some artists doing beautiful things with them. I want to be good. So that's kind of where we're at there. I am going to go ahead and let's do, let's do um, this one. I'm going to try to do my yellow ones first. And I don't really, I or don't, I didn't wait for everything to completely dry when I did the sample. I mean, you don't want it to be soaking wet, but I do, I don't worry too much about it. Laura, that's a good point. She said the Corinne markers seem much more highly pigmented, and I do think that's true. I do find them a little bit more um, intense. I will try to maybe do something, maybe even a similar technique with it. With those markers, pardon me. Marlene has the zigs and loves them. Liz is a zig girl. <laughs> Deb, there should be a warning. Don't even if you're a hot mess. I need to make a video of what my husband has to get me out of. <laughs> yes, you should. That would be very funny. And highly entertaining. I think everyone would love that. Deb, get right on that, okay? <laughs> Let's see. The paper I'm using, that is a great question. I'm sorry I didn't mention. The only paper I ever use with Ziggs is Bristol Smooth. I have tried other papers in the past and I never liked the results. In fact, when I first got the markers, I did not think that I would keep them because I tried watercolor, cardstock, all different kinds, um, and none of it did I get good results. And someone suggested Bristol Smooth and I absolutely love it. So if you see me coloring with zigs, it's always Bristol Smooth cardstock. Deb says she likes the Corins equally, but she finds that they work best just putting small puddles and watering from that as opposed to drawing or outlining with them. Oh, that's a good point. And I do agree with that because if you do what I did here, I feel like the line is very, very harsh. Jenny says, are you using watercolor paper today? I'm using Bristol Smooth. Steph says she has both and she likes the Corinne a little more for bold colors. So it's looking like a lot of you really think that um, that they are more pigmented and so you're liking that for those results. All right, I'm gonna take bright yellow now. So I'm using yellow and bright yellow. I tend to like bright yellow as my orange option. I know it's called bright yellow, but I find that I think it's, it's, I like it better than the orange. There, I said it. I said it. So you'll notice I colored right over the pink and right over the yellow. Also, Frank is asleep right at my feet. I see I'm going to have Velcro dog number two. And then we're going to go right over what we just did. And don't worry about coloring over the other balloon lines. I do think it works best if you try to work from, from light to dark, but it's not necessary, completely necessary. And we're gonna go up here and do the same thing up here. Now in a little bit, I'm going to share that there you're not going to want to color over the whole thing in certain instances. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and add our turquoise green. Laura says it definitely looks orange on camera. I think it does too. Reese says has the zigs and loves them. I do not wet the paper first. I don't want my paper super, super wet, so I just go on dry and um, blend out with the water brush pen. If you don't have a water brush pen, a paintbrush dipped in water is going to work too. All right, let's just do those for now. 
So what I mean is this turquoise balloon is going to overlap the yellow. So I want to, instead of going over that yellow part, let's just go ahead and do all of the, the turquoise aqua color first. So we're just going to add color. I'm actually just going to avoid that little tippy top balloon area. Color that in with something else. And when I'm happy with this, then I'm going to just color this little section with whatever is left on my pin. So if I need some more, I can go over that harsh line a little bit and just add that right on top. And I, that way you're not dragging their water-based markers. So if you're going to go over, especially a darker color, you're going to drag that color into the other balloon. And I don't want there to be that orangish color in the turquoise. Shimon Odin will teach Frank the ways of the cling. He sure will, because he has got those down. Where are you, buddy? Oh, he's laying on the other side. <laughs> the work trauma is real. Dev and Shimon, you're so funny. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to work... all of this turquoise area first. And I see I missed my little balloons where I, the balloon is tied off. If my water stops coming out a little bit, I usually will just kind of push the marker onto my paper towel or microfiber cloth to get it going again. And then I'm going to go up here and we'll work right over the pink. And blend out. And I'm going to try to keep this part of the coloring just inside the pink area so that the pink doesn't bleed into my other balloon. However, Let's go ahead and fix that. When you're coloring a full background, there's always little places that you forget. Agree about the grays. I miss what we said about the grays. What were we saying about grays? I've gotten to be such an aqua pen snob. I really like the fine pointed tips. <laughs> Do we like the grays of the Corinne better? Is that what we're talking about and I missed? So probably one of my favorite blends for this card is the teal and the green, and the teal and the yellow, really, both. And I did end up using a couple colors, so I'm using light green and yellow green. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. The, the, the gray Corins don't move at all with water, Colleen said. Yes, I have not used them a lot. Um, that's a super good point because, so I color a lot of no line coloring of critters, which I'm sure you guys know. And because of that, I need grays and I don't like the grays. You're, you're absolutely right. So next, we're going to just color that section that's over the turquoise balloon. And then we're going to color the section over yellow. So I did the green first. And I like to just work in the little areas to help eliminate too much of them going over each other. And I really feel like the more layering you do as the more you add the colors to each of these, the more it looks starts to look pretty. Can kind of look like a mess at first, but just keep going. Oh, thank you, Reese. Waiting is always a torture. I love teal, Deb said, yes.
So are you guys, I know someone mentioned earlier that Lawn Fawn release is coming. Are we all excited for Lawn Fawn? It's probably one of my favorite releases. I say that. I, I swear I say that every time. I really love it. All right, let's add some purple. Yeah, and Rochelle, that is exactly what I was trying to achieve, was a very transparent look like balloons um, and kind of allowing some of the imperfection really works here really, really well. Let's do that in purple. Oh, this one's supposed to be purple. This is going to look kind of brown, but that's okay. It's on the edge. Let's just color that one first, actually. That's kind of muddy looking. Not my favorite. Excited for the flowers and sewing theme. Absolutely, Kelly. That is, you got guessed exactly why I'm so excited. Cassie's excited. Christina's excited. Uh, yes. Oh, Judy. So many of you guys late, but here. Hello, Handmade Not Hallmark. Your handle always sticks out at me because I love it. All right. I really feel like my purple is not moving very good today. Now, this is going to be in the center of our panel, so it is going to be covered up by our greeting, a lot of it. If it's not super perfect, that's okay too. And then we'll go down here. Does anyone else spin their paper around when they're doing things like this? Oops. Let's see how I got some of my orange into my purple. I'm going to pick it up with the tip of my paintbrush and move it off. Let's see, Jenny, I'm excited for the hot air balloons. Yes. Oh, her son's nursery is done in elephants and hot air balloons. How perfect is that? I love it. So now I'm just going to fill in the last few little areas. Let's see. Go ahead and do that. We're going to do pink along this side. Just do a nice little blend. Spin my paper, Rochelle said. Yes. What is everyone's plans this weekend? What are you going to get to craft? And what are you going to craft? If you are, I always love hearing that. The um, All Things Splendid, even if you miss the first part, the replay will be available. So you can catch it. Catch anything you missed. Kelly, sleep. Yes, you need to. Oh, I love that book, Handmade Not Hallmark. Yes, I totally can get, get that vibe. I love when Lawn Fawn does elephants. Those are always some of my most favorite sets from Lawn Fawn, for sure. I am not going to go over my pink balloon over there quite yet since I just added color to it. I'm gonna work kind of on the, the teal and then we'll go over the yellow and orange, which I can kind of do at the same time since they're similar. And 
and I'm going to clean out a lot of my brush and we're just going to come back here and pick up a tiny bit of teal. Oops, not over there, just this part, Nicole. Let's pick up a little bit more and just a hint of that teal where this pink, where it overlaps the or is underneath the pink balloon. So kind of imagining that it's peeking through. That's what I'm going for. Let's see, watching daughter number two. Let's see, finishing my December daily. So far behind, Megan said, that's okay. Do what you can. Making cards and small lapel pins. Stitching Valentine's patterns and chocolate bunnies. Yay! Reorganizing all my craft supplies too. Hopefully, Shimon said, nice. Ree says, this weekend is for working on beading projects. No crafting, Sarah says. Stitching Pashta hearts. Is that you, Cassie? Of course, my chat went too high. Sandy, not Cassie. Awesome. I did not get any stitch, but I... I too may uh, break those out this weekend. I actually have a little free time, which is nice. So I just noticed that I'm missing a couple of tiny little areas. Before I ever walk away from a background, I do try to kind of step back, look at it, and see what I've missed because I've always missed something. Now with this particular background, I don't feel like we need to color in the background. Sometimes, depending on the card, I do. But for this particular one, I don't think so. Donna says her Spellbinders All in One kit is supposed to come and can't wait to play with it. Yay! Handmade, not Hallmark, going to try to craft, been in a bit of a crafting funk lately. You know, I was just commenting on that on, on somebody else before I did this this morning. And I do think we definitely ebb and flow. And it's okay. It's okay to ebb and flow. Kind of go with it. Try If you do more than one craft, try something else for a little bit. Sometimes it jump starts your creativity. Or my go-to, make a whole bunch of backgrounds with something. <laughs> oh, Cassie says she might start on her egg dies and some stitching. Ca okay, for my Pashta die, felt die stitchers, I hear through the grapevine. I have not seen them, so I can't tell you for sure. But I hear from the grapevine that the new release is going to be pretty cute. <laughs> and again, I've not seen it. That's just what I'm hearing. All right, let me zoom back out just a tiny bit. So we all have loads of packaging, right? Loads and loads of packaging from all of the stamps, the dyes, the stencils, all the good stuff we buy. And if you're like me, you probably store your products in the sleeves or whatever, so you take them out of the packaging. I, oh gosh, I got, Deb, I got embossing powder everywhere. Um, I keep the packaging because they make fantastic flat shakers. And the great thing about flat shakers as opposed to the shakers we love that we've created with foam forever is look at the profile. So much easier to ship this card or send this card in the mail than trying to ship the foam ones. I'm not saying I don't love the foam ones. I love them. Um, Colleen says, question, any idea when the new release for Pashta will be? I believe the end of the month, but I don't know exactly what day. Who loves a shaker? I do. I did put a couple different things in here and I really wanted, because I spent so much time doing a background, I want it to add to the festive, you know, feeling of the card, but not take away. So iridescent stars, I used a lot of those because they don't really cover things up. And then a few silver just to mix it up so that there's a little something else extra going on in there. So packaging. I got loads of new packaging. What I like to do is trim it down. So I'm at, you could, you know, pull that apart and save that little part, but I'm not going to. You're gonna get two 
from this one. And I just want to make sure it's bigger than my card front. Let's give myself a little bit more wiggle room, shall we? I don't really super, oops, that didn't cut very good. It's not going to cut very good. Well, it's hidden. That's fine. And then obviously, because I just cut it in half, it's attached at the top and the bottom and I want to trim that because we're going to make a little pocket. I love this because I feel like we're reusing things that we would normally throw away. Jenna loves the pop of black for the sentiment. Thank you. I will say that my original, I did black cardstock and white embossed the greeting and I it was too much black. I felt like it was too overpowering, but I liked that little bit. So thank you. So I am only cutting off the very, the sides, so I have two separate sheets. So I'm gonna save one of these because I can use it for something else. And we are gonna go ahead and trim this down. And what I like to do, actually this corner is a little dog-eared. I was using a scrap of cardstock, so we definitely need to get rid of that. We want to trim it. I You don't have to. You can leave it A2 sized. I would say scant A2 to leave room for wrapping the shaker material around. But I'm going to trim mine to four by five and a quarter. So let's just cut off that side to get rid of that little torn piece. And then I'm going to trim down on this side too. I could have trimmed all that one, but... I don't like that muddy looking balloon. So that's what I'm trying to get rid of. So that's four. And then we're going to go to five and a quarter. Happy Friday, Penny. Oh, are we talking about pets? Oh, thank you so much, Dances with Hooves. That's so nice of you. It's really, really hard to lose a pet. And I, I feel like Brody has had a lot of health problems. And I, some of you might know this. He is a rescue. We rescued him when he was nine. He had been used for breeding. He had, not, he had gone through multiple owners. Um, he was not treated well at all. And uh, what's funny is we actually went to pick out a puppy. I know we had lost... Our six-year-old Shizu, he developed Cushing's. He went blind. Um, it was it was really traumatic. We had not expected it. He was very, very loved. And so we wanted a new puppy. Anyway, we went to get the puppy. Brody was there, and we couldn't leave him because they were going to put him down. And um, we just couldn't let that happen. But he has his health is deteriorated. <laughs> Karen, I need to come meet Frank. I know. I figured you guys are all like, oh my gosh, Nicole, what are you doing with another dog? I don't want three dogs. I really, really don't. But, you know, here we are. He's literally sleeping right down here next to my feet. He just wanted to be next to me. <laughs> At least he's not chewing on cords anymore. Karen, come stay. So what I like when I'm doing a flat shaker is a strong adhesive. I don't know about you guys, but I love this red adhesive. It's super sticky. This is the quarter inch. I also very much love the one eighth inch, but it is very sticky. But in this case, it's going to be nice and strong to hold everything the way we want it to. So what I like to do is let's just remove one side at a time. Sending you so much love, love you guys. It's so hard losing a pet. It's so hard when any. I don't really want to cry. I I will I will cry with you. Let's just leave it at that. So I put it face down. I know it's super hard to see because it's clear. But I do one side at a time, and I like to lay it like this so that I can very tightly pull 
that packaging around. I hope that you can see that. Super tight because I want it to be as flat as possible. And then I'm gonna pull off the other one and we're gonna do the same thing. And I tend to like to start with the long sides of my background. Now, it doesn't have to be card size either. Maybe you just want a little strip that's a shaker and you could do a big greeting down one side or it could be like here and you could do something up here. Play around with the flat shaker. It is really, really fun to play around with. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna wrap the top and the bottom, but I have kind of found if you just leave it like this and wrap it, see how it's gonna stick out a little bit? So I always just take my scissors, not right at the corner, a little above, hope that, and I just go at a little angle. And then we're gonna go back with our tape It is family, not just a pet, for sure. You guys are my people. We love our pets around here, obviously. It's like a zoo. <laughs> I, and all my family's coming over tonight, again. We want the babies to play. So we have the bottom, and I'm only going to do it on the bottom to start with. And then we're just going to fold it up. And because we notched it, I don't have to worry about anything hanging off the edge, which I love. Now, before I fill it, I always like to just prep everything else. So we're going to do the same thing at the top. We're going to just trim these at an angle. Again, tr try not to go right close to the corner. I'm also going to... It's so sticky. Oh yeah, you do have to be careful where you lay it down. I don't have to anymore. Good news, look at all the glitter and stuff that had, it has picked up. <laughs> it's not sticky anymore, but when I got it, oh. And it's so sticky in the packaging. But what I do love about it is that I don't have to worry about things going anywhere. So what we're going to use to fill it is this is some, I think this is Lucy's Little Things Itty Bitty Clear Stars, but Pretty Pink Posh has this as well. Same thing. Um, whatever you have on hand. Literally, I like to go, because we all have all this stuff on hand, right? In fact, let's just fill it. That looks good. And then this is some Pretty Pink Posh Silver Star Confetti. And we wanna do a little bit of it too. In fact, I don't wanna accidentally overspill, so I'm gonna make a mess, mess on my desk instead. That's fine. We'll clean it up later. And let's see what we think about that. Maybe a few more. Trimming the angle ahead of time is so much easier, I agree. So true. Let's see. Tuck only weighed 11 pounds, but when we came in the back door, it sounded like what a herd of buffalo. How do the smallest dogs make the most noise? We always have laughed about that. All right. Time to close it up. That's all I'm going to put inside my shaker. I... I personally, my favorite product to put in shakers, you can put sequins, uh, you could do seed beads, all kinds of things. They're going to work in there. But my favorite product, if you're really looking for a flat-ish card, is definitely confetti, uh, the flat confetti. Because look how flat that is. Because it's a flat product. And it's just so fun. This could be a celebration card for anything. You could do it hear me out. We're springtime. I noticed that, I mean, I don't have a senior this year. I'll have one next year. My last one. Uh, but graduation was announced on our school's Facebook page and stuff. School colors and grad, you know, it could be graduation cards. 
Very, very easy. Balloons work for lots of occasions. So uh, consider that too. I, I like doing balloons and then you could always do, you know, a congrats and the like a little graduation cap or whatever. I think that would be super cute. Just thought of that. School colors for the balloons. Jean says, our chihuahuas, our chihuahua cross sounds like a herd of elephants. She rubs everywhere, <laughs> runs everywhere. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I love you guys talking about your pets in the chat. That's funny. Okay, now I am going to go ahead and attach this right to my background. And I'm just going to use, I'm going to use another very strong tape. This one is the Altenew tape and I love it. It's very strong. I don't want to worry about my shaker coming off. You could use the red line tape again. I love this because it's, it's wide. It's about a half inch. Is anyone in the chat going to be doing the Altenew mindfulness retreat classes? On the weekend of the, what is it? The Oh, I don't even know the day. It's the first weekend in March. Let me know. I'm doing two classes. I'm very, very excited. Oh, wonderful, Sarah. I love that. I'm going to peel off my backing, and we're just going to pop this in place. Who's made flat shakers? Let me know in the chat. I love hearing. Really, and at this point, I also think this would make a very cute baby congratulations card. Uh, talking about the new baby made me think of that. Wouldn't this be a super cute uh, baby congrats card too? Let's see. Carol is doing it. Oh, yay. I'm so excited. All right, I, and it may be sold out. I know it was close to being sold out. But I wanted to just see if anyone here was going to be there. Let me get rid of all my backing. Okay, I am going to show you now how I stamped my greetings for my card. So the new birthday stamp set that I was showing you at the beginning of the video Lots of love for flat shakers. Not made one yet, Rebecca said, but really want to. Um, I hope that this takes away the feeling of messing it up. It truly is so easy. Must do more, Darcy says, yes. I love flat shakers, Karen said. So what I thought with these big, bold ones, any of these really, the bigger, bold ones, it would be fun to have an ombre effect. So you will notice even though it's all the same color, it goes light to dark. So I'm going to take a trio of Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks. And we are going to use Tide Pool, Tropic, and Aegean, which I always say wrong. I'm sure that that's, we're just going to leave it there. And what I like to do, and I'm just going to stamp these both now. We don't really need these little phrases. Let me get rid of those so they're out of the way. I just did both at the same time, and now I'll have some extra. I ink them up with the lightest color and go ahead and stamp them. And I, oops, kind of ignore that. I got ink on my hand. Then I take my dark, or my mid-tone, pardon me, color, and just about the halfway point down, I'm going to ink that up. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. Reese says she's made flat shakers, but she uses the pre-made, oops, the pre-made uh, shaker sleeves, which you definitely can do. I just like to use up my um, packaging and I'm out of the size I wanted. Now, I usually try to blend this out. I don't like that harsh line at all. So I would probably restamp this if I can't fix it. 
I'm going to go back to my light color. We may try to fix that in a different way. And I also did it over here, which I did not mean to do. What you can do, so you, in fact, I'm going to restamp it because that's not what I want to show. Let's just flip it over. How about that? All right, let's start over. We're going to go back to our tide pool. And we're going to stamp our light color. We're live. It's fine. Then I'm going to go in with my dark color for the bottom half. But I've got some of it up here on the other words. I like to just take a blending brush, whoops, not there, and tap that so that it blends it so we aren't going to get a harsh line. And that looks much, much better. I am going to stamp at least the top part. with my light color uh, there. That's much better coverage. Okay, darkest color. Oh, yay. Carol says her friend Lori and her are going to do the mindfulness. That is awesome. Judy loves the positively saturated inks. That makes me so happy. I'm glad. So we're going to do our dark color here just at the bottom. Or if you are not very tidy, you get your ink everywhere. But again, I want to just tap anything that's over the air, any area I don't want it to be dark. So it blends it out. You don't have to remove it, but that way it gives it a much nicer line. Oh, that actually looks super good. I'm very happy with that. And there's our greetings. And then with the magic of camera, I've die cut it with my die cutting machine. I love the magic of video. I wish that's how we could really craft. Yes, and you guys, here is what I'm going to tell you. Here's my tip for the weekend if you're getting ready to craft. It's just paper. It's just paper. Generally, even at that, there's a way to fix mistakes. Um, if you don't like something, you don't have to do it again. But the great thing is, is with stamps and coloring tools, you can just remake it. I remade this background, kind of embarrassed to admit since it's such a simple card. This is my third one, so this is my fourth. Uh, I made a couple of big blunders. So it happens. It happens all the time. And even though it's irritating because, you know, you took the time to make something, it is just paper. I hope and I hope that just inspires you to um, just try something. Try something new. Ta-da! Deb says, I really should. I really need to find like a sound for the ma the magic thing. Like the little Kelly, didn't you tell me I needed to do that? I feel like. Need to have like the little chimes or something. Deb goes, I repurpose just about everything. Me too. Um, I will pull things apart. <laughs> uh, maybe I have something in my stash that I've never used. Let's say gift tags. I know I did this at Christmas time. Uh, I've had for literally probably 10 years. And I pulled those babies apart. I kept all the twine, like jingle bells. Um, I threw like the base thing away, but there was, I kept so much of it. I do it all the time. So I used a nice strong adhesive for the little greeting and I did use two different greetings, same card, but like I said, baby greeting, graduation greeting, wedding. If you change this to some wedding colors, oh, that'd be pretty too. So, and that's it. Super easy. Shakers are just so much fun. And kind of impressive without being like a really difficult mechanism or anything to put together. Just a easy little shaker sleeve. So the next time you get a new stamp set or dies, keep that packaging and give it a try. Oh good, Deb, I'm so glad. I need a magic wand. Yes, wouldn't that be funny? Oh, thank you, Carol. That's so sweet of you. Okay, let me flip this around. Did, were there any questions that I missed? 
Sometimes I get to like coloring or assembling and I'm so afraid I might maybe miss something. Let's see, really pretty in white gunmetal and iridescent for weddings. Kelly, that would be stunning. Absolutely stunning. I could see that. Wouldn't that be so pretty? I may have to look at that. I feel like there was some, maybe not this release. There were some great wedding greetings recently from Simon. I may have to try that. That'd be really fun. I did mount it on a white panel with some space. I have found, let me flip that. I have found that, so this is an A2 card base. The card base itself is four and a quarter by five and a half. This panel, I trimmed down. I started with a bigger panel, but I trimmed it to four by five and a quarter. It gives you a little bit of room. Not only it kind of provides a, an instant frame or mat, but it gives you a little room for when you're wrapping around your, your packaging. Oh, Kelly, yes, send me one. I would love to see that. That would be awesome. Ask about Mont Montlucat for your son's asthma. It helped your daughter at his age, age, especially with winter asthma. And winter asthma is the worst. So, okay. Montlucat. Okay, I will ask. In fact, I need to write that down like right now. Before it goes away in my chat, hold on. Okay. Thank you for the suggestion. Oh, thank you, Jenna. For mailing shaker cards, do you use a bubble mailer? For these, I would not. Um, for, for thick ones, I definitely would. But for these, I'll just put them in a regular envelope because, because the profile is so thin. It's really no thicker than a card that you put a couple of, of layers of things on. That is the benefit of a flat shaker. Screenshot with your phone. I probably should have, but I wrote it down. <laughs> oh, thank you, Natalie. That's so nice of you. Oh, Megan, that's so cute. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> that's so cute. Oh, yay. Awesome, Mama Rocks. Thank you for being part of my replay crew. I appreciate you guys. Singular, I might have to ask. He has taken, honestly, I don't think the Zyrtec is working and he's not good about, and that, this is his fault. He doesn't take the Zyrtec every day, uh, which I think he should, but he doesn't. One day a pill Singular is named, okay. I may ask about that too. Thank you. Thank you guys. I'm glad I do this live before taking him to the doctor. I get some some things I can ask the doctor about. Yes, it's so hard. Aria, oh. Hello, Aria. <laughs> Let's see. That is really good to know. You got a, a lot of you are saying singular clean clears up so many severe allergies. I'm going to ask. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll report back to you guys next week. How about that? <laughs> okay, next week. Let's talk about next week and what, what should we do for a live next week? I'm gonna put a poll up. I'm pretty sure, well, pretty sure. I'm going to do a Lawn Fawn card for our live next week. I hope you guys are excited about that. I'm going to put a poll up a little bit later today and you guys can pick what we will do during the live. So um, throw, throw in the comments what you would like to see so I know what to put up for you guys. Uh, but I thought it would be fun. I will have a video, either an edited video with lots of things, either Wednesday or Thursday. I need to look at my schedule again. But then I thought we would do something live. So let me know. Please do dang seasonal stuff. Um, Lawn Fawn would be great. Okay, if there's anything you really, really, really want to see me use from that you've seen already in the sneak peeks, let me know. I will put the poll up a little bit later. And then... Um, Whatever wins, wins. That's what we're going to go with. I'm going to go with whatever wins. Um, it needs to have won, though, by 
you know, early enough for me to do a sample. <laughs> uh, I'll let you know when I put my post up when, when the poll's going to end. Interactive card. Um, Jenny says, can you do a masculine card sometime? Yes. No, Christine, it is going to be next weekend. I was going to do it this weekend, but um, I really need to do it next weekend. But I'm posting that today, too. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. I hope you get some crafting in or something that you like to do in, uh, some relaxation. And I will see you guys here next week. Make sure and look for that poll. Um, it probably will be up after lunchtime, after I get back from taking him to the doctor. Um, but check it out. I'll give you a, a few days to, to say what you wanna see. And um, other than that, thank you again. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for always joining me here on Friday so I'm not alone talking to myself. <laughs> um, I love you and I will see you all next week. Bye.